Mm. If you hate America, no, no, it's not about America. In fact, it is about a cult. Once again, we're talking about a cult. <laughs> but like three to me was just the meme of it. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Mm -hmm. Um, Which is that was like the entire. That's my entire knowledge of the series up until that point. No, I mean that. That's that's yeah. That if we're talking money on the line, that every every other rule goes out the window. Clap, 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 clap. Everybody clap your hands. Don't, because it's going to fuck up the recording. Wow. You can't stop me. You I'll know what? Clap I clap everywhere and all the time. You know what? You are correct. I cannot stop you. Noah, the unstoppable, they call him. No, 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 no. I don't want to imply anything greater than I am. I just simply mean you personally cannot stop me. <laughs> You're too far away. No You're too far away and too me. small, you fool. No one can stop me is a little too much of a uh, too much of a pompous, grandiose statement implying I have any authority over and, anything and around honest, me. <laughs> and let's be honest, we'll cause someone to come find you and put a stop to you. Like just if I know anything Jeff about knocking movies. on my door right now and he's just gonna be like, here's someone had to stop you, and then he'll <laughs> like use his freaking jujitsu to kill me or something. Is that how you think it'll go down, huh? Well, yeah. The dudes beat me the last five Thanksgivings. I can't compete with actual training. I'm just bigger than him. I'm not even stronger than him anymore. You know that guy is almost prepared to lift a combined 1,800 pounds That's in the three disgusting. categories. That's insane. That is. He signed up for his first competition. He's like ready to go. That's awesome. I'm excited for him. I'm so man. I'm. So, Hopefully, I wish... he doesn't poop his pants. I, mm, I, I, I know that does. that is I know that you're saying that because it's a real thing that does happen, but also that's very funny. Hopefully he can still poop afterward, um, <laughs> which is the other thing that is a real thing that can happen, which is I lifted so much weight. I can't poop anymore. I'm sorry. I wish and this is I want this on record. <laughs> I wish Jeff and I were better friends because I feel like I was like he and I were not when, when, when we were in in. Like high school, good old homeschooly times. When we're in homeschooling times, like I just think that neither of us were like on, like neither of us vibed with each other at all, right? Not like now that we were like not okay with it, not cool, but like we just didn't, we weren't friends. And now that we're both a little bit older, a little bit wiser, a little bit more dumbass, I wish I want I want it on record that I I think Jeff and I should be better friends. And that's you know what, I want to put it on record. I think Jeff and I should be worse enemies. That's also fair. That's I mean that's how yeah, I feel Jeff less. and I get along pretty well. Um, but I'd like to live in a world where uh, it's on site, you know. Nah, I mean, he he will kick your ass on site. I, I have no doubt of that. That's also, fine. I have a comment. Also, uh, that's how I feel about Sam. To be fair, I I wish that Sam and I were worse were worse enemies. Fair enough, I suppose. It's is it? it's an option. Is it's it true? It no, but I, I do really like Jeff, though. I don't I don't talk to Jeff that often, but same. I don't talk to anyone that often. Well, less same, but still. Yeah, no, I, I that's that's kind of how I feel. It's just I feel like I don't I haven't put the work in on my end. So well, at least uh, you acknowledge it as a you problem. And that's the okay. first step to like, getting better. No, are you just Thank upset you that we that we say we like your brother more? Is that is that the whole are you I mad? Was, I never said I liked his brother. No, more. I, I said did. that at all. I did. I said that. <laughs> you only just said that now. You decided to get that jab in. I was in here encouraging you and Jeff having a better relationship, saying that at least, you know, it's your fault. But now you're just coming at me for no good reason at all. I think it's a pretty good reason. I'm hoping, wow. I'm hoping it'll endear me to Jeff, obviously. Oh, I, uh, screw you, buddy. I'm going I'm to do my beverage. Because we got, we got a delicious was, beverage a today. Pop. I'll give you that. That was a really good pop. So um, next week we're going to do a Wegman seltzer. Uh, because those things, they sound like a gun going off. There's so much pressure in that can. That's the spiciest water I've ever had. Wegman Seltzer hits like a truck. It hits like maybe even two trucks. It's absolutely fantastic. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Two trucks. Today I'm talking about something else I got at Wegmans that I did not think I would ever find again. And I'm so happy. So back when I lived in uh, in Cory, at Walmart, they had this brand of coffee. Uh, I'm realizing I don't know how to say this. I think it's just La Colombe. La Colombe coffee. It's their draft lattes. They're very good. I like them a lot. Um, little cans and they stopped carrying them. I know this because one day they were not in their spot anymore and they were on huge discount. So I bought all the rest of them. Um, but you know, I haven't found one at any of the Walmarts in town here now. 
So I thought, oh, well, this was just a fun little thing that I'm never going to find again. And then I found 10 times as many as I used to know existed at Wegmans. So now I have a flavor selection to go with and oat milk. Um, but pretty excited about this. This is the oat milk original latte. They have flavored oat milk ones, but this is the one that is uh, just plain and normal. So let's give it a taste. A little taste of and cheese. Mm. Mm, yep. So that's me. it's very nice. Um, it's very oat milky. It's coffee. It's just good. Their regular coffee is lactose free, even though it is made with actual milk still. Nice. Absolutely fantastic stuff. You know what? I think that's there's something to be said about the amount of underratedness that exists on lactose free milk. I feel like everyone mm-hmm. just runs to nut milk, but mm-hmm. lactose free milk is actually it goes hard. Mm-hmm. It does. I prefer lactate. Like lactate is the shit. Like act, like lactate the the yeah. drink, not the pills. Yeah, yeah. Um, no lactate is the shit. It, the problem is, as as I've discovered, grow, like going up, going forward, it still it still fucks up my stomach, and I don't know why. I don't know like mm, what that's about. Maybe not enough kind of thing. Like not strong enough in the lactate department. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I uh, I was talking to Kesney, known listener of the podcast, who messaged me every time I mention her name. So hi, Kesney. Um, uh, who like she also has the same the same issue with with lactate where it just doesn't quite doesn't quite keep her stomach settled and I don't know what what the hell that's about but I'm unhappy with it. Have you considered you might um in addition to having the lactose issue, it might be milk like milk itself. Yeah, I have. We actually we picked up um uh almond milk earlier this week for the first time mm-hmm. so we're gonna try that out and see if that helps. Because I know, like, it is being allergic to milk separate from a lactose intolerance issue is a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So maybe that's, like, the unfortunate um, additional issue you're having. I mean, it, w- I mean, it would make sense. Why would you know if you're like, ah, that, that damn milk. lactose. Exactly, exactly. And, like, I already, I already know that I'm allergic to a couple of weird things that are terrible in their raw form. But when I actually, like cook them in some way it, it becomes not a problem like for example fucking um what is it uh train of thought bananas i'm allergic to bananas uh unless they're cooked i can eat i can eat cooked bananas i can eat raw bananas for example well, who's cooking bananas making like banana bread okay i guess i mean it's you and jack johnson with the banana pancakes am i right everybody yo banana pancakes like jack shit. johnson you shut your mouth like, do we like jack johnson here in the podcast i don't know who it is i'm sorry Fuck you. you. I'm sorry, I don't have you on this one. No, I got no Jack Johnson. Half a sec. You know, you know the song Banana Pancakes? I You don't? I don't think I do. No! <laughs> this is an outrage! All right. Outrageous Accepting applications there. for a new podcast where we just talk about Jack Johnson. <laughs> and Not a new podcast cool. host. It's a whole new podcast. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Society Very- has progressed beyond the need for podcast hosts that don't like Jack Johnson. That's fair. You know what? I can respect it. I don't like it, but damn it, do I respect it. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Eh, this is a catchy song. I don't mind this. Okay. There's something about it that feels familiar, so maybe I have heard it before, but who knows? Oh, but yeah, real quick, last thing about this coffee. Um, all the milk-based ones, super creamy, super delicious. Um, the mocha's great. The espresso's great. The peppermint um that i just found out exists is fantastic and they have like a decent amount of caffeine in them uh somewhere between 120 and 140 i believe depending on your blend that's not bad that's not bad i can i can get with that um the milk ones are actually foamy the oat milk obviously is not a foamy one as much but that's that's oat milk so not really surprised now you asked me why i uh blew on the can before we started recording and i will explain I, that now i technically asked why you blew the can before we started recording I want okay that on record. um you <laughs> asked why i blew the can before we started Thank recording you. which uh anyway it has a little plastic tab on the top to keep you from guzzling it too fast it's a little flow restrictor that helps uh i don't know it just helps it go a little bit slower which i found in the milk ones helps you maintain the frothy milkiness a little bit longer um, in addition to just drinking the drink slower. However, I always blow on it just in case any dust got under that plastic cap. Okay, I mean, that makes sense. I, that is my one, the one thing I've noticed, especially during COVID, that I, I, I feel real weird about drinking from cans now, that I haven't, like, mm, that haven't yeah. been, like, pre-boxed or whatever. 
not because I necessarily think that there's going to be anything wrong with it, but like just on the very low chance that like it's the awareness now. It's it is. It's it's the awareness that I don't I don't I don't know. I miss I miss not giving a shit about whether or not I lived or died. You know, I mean, what I I feel it. No, but I also <laughs> I also hit this point of being afraid of what was on cans like back when I was in my monster chugging days because I got energy drinks from gas stations and one time I just had one that had like actual just grimy water on the top yeah. and I'm like yeah. oh well and I washed it and I drank out of it and by washed it I mean I took it to the sink and I sprayed it out mm. Mm -hmm. I mean what else are you going to do um, honestly Power I'm going to keep it 100% with you guys uh, my, my brain has not uh, changed in like my fear of germs it still does not exist Mm -hmm. I respect that. Um, I would straight up eat things off the floor, and I may have done that yesterday. Not at my house either. Yikes! See, is that gross? That's a lot. Yeah, sure. Does it matter? Nah. I mean, I I think that there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, right? I think it's just you have to be aware that you are taking those, you are making that choice, and I think you are. I think you're very honestly. Aware, like, it depends on the level of encouragement I get. That's true too. As to whether I'm going to eat off the floor, as in like. If I drop some, like my floor, I know what level of dirt is on my floor. I know that level there's three. no pet hair. I know that there might be some people hair, but like Ooh. for the most part, it's not going to be that bad. I vacuum the kitchen pretty frequently. Um, and when I drop something on the floor and then I pick it up and Nina goes, oh, you're not going to eat that, are you? Of course, I'm going to eat it. Why would I not eat it? You know, see, I, I am the inverse. I if I. If I hadn't moved in from the shell, I think I'd be a lot more willing to eat shit off the floor. But because I have to deal, if I do that, I have to then hear her say, yeah, but I kiss you and I don't want that shit. And then I have to deal with that the rest of the time. I, I definitely have been, I definitely am more careful with it. Okay, I mean, yeah, I guess I, that, uh, that's fair. I'll eat rocks, for like five bucks. No, I mean, that, that's, that's, yeah, that, if we're talking money on the line, that, every, every other rule goes out the window. Yeah, but I don't know. I just like I'm not I'm definitely not a germaphobe or like even like I, I would say I go beyond like the rational like germaphobe and I am not even like a ra like I, I am at a point where I am irrationally unafraid of things that should be scary. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I kind of I kind of kind of jealous, kind of low key wish that were me. It seems like the, that Slippery. seems like it would be a pe more peaceful life. It is quite peaceful. Um there are pros and cons, but, you know, we, we, we manage, you know, we get by. Yeah, we vibe. Um, uh, speaking of eating things, uh, you guys, what's your favorite kind of chip? Um, are we talking tortilla chip? Or are we talking, like, what are we talking? I think, chip in well, general? isn't that the question, though, isn't it? Is it like, do you like tortilla chips more than potato chips? A hundred percent. I think you know, I prefer a potato chip at almost all times. I am. I, I would am... rather put a potato chip in salsa. I, I'm not gonna Why lie. I hate, really? that. I hate that a lot. I'm. I won't it's, lie to you. I. I. Mm. It's just fried starch put in tomatoes. Mm. No. I don't, I don't know if I can get with that. If we're being honest, I don't like you, it. Why? I don't like it at all. What's wrong with putting a potato chip in salsa? Do you not like salsa? No, I like What's salsa, right but it, it's okay. chip in salsa. It's the sturdiness of the chip thing for me. I like that the chip's flavor true. profile mm -hmm. works with other things, in my opinion. Whereas the sturdiness of a corn chip. And the flavor a of a corn chip. chip is what I associate with salsa. I like kettle chips on their own. I don't even like them in dip. I don't like. I, mean, I, I, I do them like them dip. in dip, but like I prefer them not in dip. I actually don't like dip. I I discovered it like in the last couple Are years. You tell me you I, just eat straight corn chips. Yeah, I mean I like salsa. Yeah, but never gag it salsa, when I say it salsa isn't a dip. <laughs> Banned. So what? Salsa is not a dip. I'm considered like okay. When you tell say me, dip, what do you I, do when you what do you do when you grab a corn chip? When what you, you do okay, okay. to get the sauce because you dip it, something you in it, it out does of the not bowl? make it a dip. Like what do you I mean? don't, I don't think of. No, okay. what, do you, what do you mean? A dip, a dip in my mind is is would be something more like, um, like sour cream and onion. Like sour cream and onion is a dip, or like I don't know. I don't think of salsa as a dip. I, I, I it is, I guess technically, but I don't. I've never considered the words. Oh yeah, I got that salsa dip. Well, no one says it like that because that's weird. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, no, no. It doesn't make it. No, you don't though. get to try and pretend that it's us being weird about that sentence. You're still the one that said that sentence as if it was a normal thing. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, if someone said salsa dip to me, I'd be like, that's weird. I know salsa's a dip. You don't have to tell me. 
Fair enough. I don't know. I've never, I've never in my brain associated salsa with dip. Like, I just don't think of them as the same. They're not the same thing to me. Salsa is salsa and dip is dip. Dip in my mind, it tends to be a, I guess, creamier substance. Like it more. Uh, so what about like hummus? Do you not consider hummus a dip? I guess hummus is a dip. OK, yeah, I guess it is. I don't know. I, I in my mind, I have a very specific association with like. Dip with chips, right? For me, dip with mm-hmm. chips sounds like sour cream and onion, like in the fucking little tub or maybe homemade if you're getting real fancy with it. And like, that's it. Like, that's I do get what real I, fancy with it. That's what I, what I like imagine. Spinach artichoke dip. What was that? I didn't hear what you said. What about like spinach artichoke dip? Spinach artichoke. I actually haven't had spinach artichoke. I used to like spinach artichoke dip a lot more when I was I younger. I haven't had it in a long, long, long time. It's good so dip. good. It's so good. I don't know. You, uh, you, I think I think you've changed my mind, Jackson. And that's what I'm here for. Is it? What that you'd I have regular chips with salsa, or changed my mind a different dip. way? That's that, that's that 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 I've been I've been too close minded about what I consider to be dip. Yeah, I don't need you to, like, you know, rewrite your history book. I just need you to be like, you know, salsa is a dip. Yeah, you, 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 you got me. It's one of those Fair things, enough. right, where as it, it sits in the range of if you can dip your thing in it, it counts as a dip. Like how... Kind of. Um, if I, you, I would disagree. Well, because, like, my thought is if you get, like, um, a dip sandwich where, like, you have, like, a I'm beef sorry. dip, for example. A, no, a not what? a sandwich made of dip. Not a sandwich made of dip. Back up, though. back up. It's like a beef sandwich that you dip into that au jus. Dipped into something. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. I would, though I am dipping a sandwich into that, I don't think I would call that very thin liquid a dip. I think dips have to have either chunks that, you co- that come out or it has to be viscous enough to stick to the chip, for example. Well, yeah, I, f- I feel like... It, I, I, I just like gotta say, though, at that when point, you said you... that salsa falls into the category of things you can just technically put a chip in, that's... That's not the same as me being like, well, you know, I could put a potato chip in Coca Cola. I was just like, yeah, you could dip. You got Salsa fucking, is fucking a dip tomato, on more than technicality. Like mm-hmm. fucking tomato soup. Can yeah, be no, I would, I would agree. I would agree. I'm, I'm not sitting here trying to say. Um, I suppose technically salsa's a salsa's a dip. I guess I'm not <laughs> okay, trying to say yeah. that. I thought that's what your stance was. No, no, no. I just wanted to clarify because I obviously I do be having stances on things being one thing or another (laughs) yeah and we're not and we're not gonna talk about it (laughs) however i i don't know i've never made no more angry than that day it will go down in infamy see i don't want to restart the conversation because i know it's just a painful conversation for everyone well it's not it's not a painful conversation for the audience well yes it is specifically it is (laughs) What's the conversation? The uh, conversation is what foods are what is. Oh, that's dumb. For example, that's like literally like seventh. That's dumb. Yeah. I so mean, it is dumb. So it's dumb that no one gets so mad about it. No, here's my point. What I get mad about more specifically than anything else is when you try to tell me that I lose the argument every time. But all that the argument boils down to is you telling me, um, actually, no, you're wrong. And then I provide reasons that I don't believe I'm wrong. And you're like, huh, fuck you, nerd. Dunk on him. I'm right. And that's like how the whole conversation goes. That's why I get so mad. That is Ben Shapiro mode of you. And it, it is, 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 it is, it is very Ben Shapiro, ben Shapiro of me. I won't lie to you. That is, it is the most, it is the most uh, scuffed, I would say, that I get with Noam is, is when we have this conversation. Uh, because it's true. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I genuinely get a lot of pleasure out of. T- out, of teeter- <laughs> out of watching Noah teeter out of watching Noah teeter over the edge <laughs> because okay and I want to make yes, this clear I will I'll- say that after that point I get just incredibly <laughs> tilted about other other yeah. things that I shouldn't get tilted about at all that in a regular I mean, conversation <laughs> I wouldn't be like fuck you Dan I'm gonna kill your mom what do you mean a ravioli is a pierogi <laughs> you know things like that like in a rational conversation <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But once it gets to the point of you just say everything I say is wrong, I'm going to get into this weirdly defensive know everything you say is wrong, you little bitch. Here's the thing. I mean, Here, yeah, and I want, I want this on record. Shitty. I want this on record. I love Noah very dearly. I think that there are times where he absolutely would win those arguments. I there is a because Noah, I, th- I think of Noah as a relatively level headed person. I, I think that Noah puts on that, that facade very well. 
I think that he keeps his, his cool for the facade, most part. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you and I have had conversations where you're like, I've I've been so angry. Uh, I, uh but you know, it's not a facade to sometimes feel emotions. No, I don't want to get too deep into this. I'm just uh, I, <laughs> you're right. Um, I there's a there's a perverse joy like I don't think anybody else that I know in watching in watching Noah descend from a relatively like coherent rational thinking human being into what he becomes when he gets angry about specifically this I I wouldn't want to do it on a serious conversation because I don't I don't think that, that that's this is low stakes enough that it's very fun if it were something that was serious it wouldn't have the same enjoyment but like it's yeah, the but I mean, most it's also low stakes not really low stakes because like it's kind of just like generally shitty. I mean, in, in my opinion, I don't know. I don't want to speak for anybody, but like, it just doesn't seem like a good time for both parties. I I I think that Noah, at least from my understanding, while Noah has said, "Hey, we shouldn't have this conversation anymore because I get mad," I don't think Noah has any actual hostility about it. I for- have specifically requested we not have it because it just boils down to me getting gaslit for three hours, and I don't like that. That's yeah, fair. I don't no enjoy being be gaslit. That's fair. That's fair. I... Uh, but that's about it. <laughs> it is... It is... It, I won't... I, I, it is a perverse joy. It is not the kind of person I am usually. It is this one specific subject that that just... I don't know, man. I just... It, it just, just happens. And then suddenly Noah's real mad, and I am over here trying to keep my shit together. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's a it's a it's an OK thing necessarily. I am also not going to pretend like I don't get a lot of perverse joy out of it. Fair enough. I suppose. I mean, no, it's not fair. It's definitely not fair enough. But we there's no there's no good more value to this conversation. I mean, we can definitely move on. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> how's everybody's day been? <laughs> not so bad. Not so bad. I'm all right. I'm vibing. Good to hear. You know, I got uh, I got Far Cry Five the Ooh, other day. How is that? Um, it's pretty fun. Let me just double check which one that is. That's the guy. That's the cult leader. Oh no, that's a that's the new one, new the America Mont- one. Yeah, yeah, it's one. Well, it's the one in Montana. Yeah, I wanted to pick like this one up like... because it looked like an enjoyable enough time. It yeah, looked like it's a lot of fun. It looked like this was the closest they were to recapturing that far cry 3 feel that they seem to be so desperately chasing um i don't know if that's necessarily a fair assumption because like i you know um i don't know if it's so desperately chasing because there was literally one game in between you guys think that far cry 4 was that bad huh is that the common um i've never played a far cry game until this one so okay no there were two games in between because the far it was far cry 3 and then Far Cry, whatever the caveman Far Cry was. Oh, that's mm. right, like the Primal. I forgot yeah. that even Primal. existed. Yeah, Primal. Primal was bad. And then there was Far Cry 4. And generally, people did not care for Far Cry 4. I really, really like Far Cry. That makes me really sad. I thought Far Cry 4 was so much fun. I, I, I get why I think people didn't care for it. It had some takes, I think, like just in the nature of the story. But I thought it was really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it was definitely unfairly um, unfairly canned, most likely. However, I also, I'm not going to sit here and say that it was completely unfairly canned. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I get that. I, I think there were definitely problems with it. I mean, if people, I don't know. I think it depends on what people's problems are with it. Because I think there are, like, some very good criticisms of it. And I think that there are some, like, well, maybe don't okay, have you that. you can calm that, down then. Yeah, well, maybe don't have that bad take then kind of opinions on it. You know what I mean? Like I know, so like I know people who are actively upset. Go ahead, sorry. So I've never played a Far Cry game until five. Um, mm-hmm. I just never really had interest. Three looked decent, but like three to me was just the meme of it. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Mm-hmm. Um, Which that is was like game, the entire. That's my entire knowledge of the series up until that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously became aware of the the series beyond that. Um, and but five is the first one I ever really played. Uh, what? How would you? Um, categorize like the gameplay in the initial games. Like, what do you do? It is a run around and shoot things and kind of just generally be a badass. It tends to have a, it tends to have a message of some kind in the story. But I will, I won't sit here and pretend like it's it's necessarily like 
it's not that it's deep, but it is feels pseudo deep enough. It, yeah, okay. it's, it's not necessarily that it's deep. It just it has a definite point, and I feel like a lot of people turn to miss the point. I don't know if that's a hot take. Uh, I don't know either because I don't know the game. And they always and they al- they almost always have a very they they almost always have a this is all your fault in some way kind of thing going on where for some reason or another at the end of the day you are the reason that the events happen or you are the reason that specifically things go horribly wrong in far cry 3 there is a very distinct moment in the very beginning of the game where you can just you just do what he says and just don't do anything you fucking the game you it's it it's the game over what does he say to do uh i don't remember the exact thing do you know uh i it's been a very long time since i uh Mark since Christ. i started that game so I'm, when i'm saying that like, i don't actually like, no offense but i don't really care about like the story like i'm asking like what does the gameplay look like the gameplay is um, a little bit jank it's kind of the driving is difficult on a keyboard no, i think not the, the like how you run how does the gameplay things. what do you, you do run you just run things. yeah Damn, yeah, that sure. is so vague. That's all but the game that's, is. That's, like, there's the game there's, isn't there's, deep. In theory, there's crap. So there's nothing. Right? There's no goal. There's no aim. There's no objectives. There's nothing you can do. You just shoot things and run around. You run around, around that's, shoot that's things. The you go the into the story. Though is the story is the goal. The goal of the of Far Cry Three specifically is you want to rescue your friends who have been captured. However, okay. as things go on, you become less willing to leave, even though you've gotten all your friends back because you're too tied up in the drama of the island. Gotcha. That's and it, it becomes a it. you're actually the problem here. Like you could have you could have fixed this forever ago and you just chose not to. Mm-hmm. And now it, now things people are dying and it is actively your fault. OK, Um, which I, I think is it, I think Far Cry 4 doubled down on that in a very extreme way, in a way that I thought was a little. A little much, if I'm being honest, but I think that it was also still really poignant. And like really a holy shit that just happened kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely a like you 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 run around, you you shoot people, you take over little objectives. Sometimes you'll have like a specific mission where it's like you have to go in here and be sneaky this time when you go kill everybody. But it really isn't okay. a deep gameplay loop. It's it's a very rooty tooty point and shooty kind of game. Yeah. Okay, because like I, I really don't tend to like shooter games, but I've enjoyed Far Cry five to this point. I've probably played like four or five hours, not a ton. But, like, um, I've enjoyed the aspect of, like, um, going around the island and liberating things. Because mm-hmm. to me, a, that's, that's a pretty common. Fun. That's a pretty common thread. Is your, yeah, that is like, yeah. the core element of Far Cry 3 could be broken down in that way as well. Yeah. Okay. Because um, um, I, I like in 5 how it feels like you are just attacking the weird, crazy religious cult. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I like some of the characters, like the gun pastor. Mm-hmm. Okay, five, no, wait, Far Cry Five is the cult one. Which one is Far Cry yeah. Four? Yes, Far Cry Four, four is the, the kickoff to the cult one. You have what? a different cult leader, but he's in a different way. He's the one in the Himalayas. Oh, okay. My bad. I was definitely thinking something. of Five. Yeah, Five is the one that has a really great kick in the gut. Five, Five. Actually, I'll t- I can tell you pretty easily. Uh, because it's not a spoiler. You've already spoil played the story. It, no, no, no. It's you've already played past the point that would have changed. The secret, the airport secret ending in the game is right at the very beginning, where fucking the cops, the cops, like, hey, just, just leave. You don't have to do this. If you just, you can just walk back to the helicopter and fuck off. Like that is an ending. To yeah, the game. but that's see when you're saying like that makes your character is making things worse. No, you're not trying to stop someone who is kidnapping and harming people is not making. That's not making things worse. That's not your character's like fucking idiot. This guy didn't walk away from the cult leader. Like it's it's good to arrest people who are actively harming others mm. in a malicious way. That's not like a your character is an idiot for making things worse. A cult leader is an idiot for starting a cult and being insane. Okay, I... so so while I don't disagree with you, mm-hmm. these in this game specifically, there is a very specific thing that will happen that is spoiler territory that only happens because of your involvement. There, the okay. whole almost all the games have a some kind of message, uh, a a almost anti meta commentary on like you just because you are the big damn like you don't have you're not supposed to be the big damn hero air quotes like you you being the big damn hero is a problem like that is a problem. I think the message it tries to show is that you need to know when it's time to step away. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think I think all at least I know for a fact three and five have a similar message in that front of like 
you you being the big damn hero you you aren't supposed to air quotes be the big damn hero like it's not it, at a certain level it's no longer your job right like at a certain point there are other authorities that you should have brought involved at different points in the game and mm-hmm. you just don't and then the yeah game i can says definitely like you're a fucking piece of shit for not just leaving and getting the proper authorities instead you wanted to yeah, do because that yourself. was my first thought immediately once i got access to an airplane i was like okay why yeah, don't I'm, I just immediately just leave the leave. county? I did the exact same thing. I did the exact same thing and was, was immediately disappointed that it will it just won't let you. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't care that it won't let me because, like, what am I going to do? Go to a different county in Montana? They're not going to design a game for the entire state and then go outside of the state to get federal. Like, I'm not going to, like, to get on a plane to D.C. and talk to a guy in a suit for half an hour about the logistics of, like, operating a search, like, a search warrant and, like, an arrest warrant. Mm-hmm. I understand that it's a video game and like I want to shoot the crazy guy who has sinner tattooed on his or just carved into his back. Exactly. He's kind of a shithead and it's fun. He's very much a shithead and it is fun. And I and I agree. I think that that is kind of the air quotes problem of Far Cry is that if the only winning it, it's the same problem that I have with um, uh, what is it called? Spec Ops Align, where if the only winning move is not to play, then there wouldn't be a game. And that's not like that. You can't punish the person playing the game or try to punish the person playing the game for playing the game. Although, like, that's the whole point of. The- yeah, it's like the ethical dilemma. I- like the game but- is there. Like, otherwise, you don't you don't get to be like, oh, you I have the moral high ground as a, as the game because I made you come play. Like, yeah, no, not- the fact that that's people's read on spec ops where it's like um the the correct decision is to just stop playing before the last mission. That's dumb. I don't I don't yeah. think that's good. The games that make you feel bad for doing your thing by locking you into a story is not cool and i think yeah. that's the issue with far cry as well like the fact that you hit a point where you don't have the choice to dip out mm-hmm. but that is the correct decision uh but like there's not actually a choice to dip out before that is, is, is bad if it makes decision. you feel bad about it however yeah. i also feel like something that it does is um it's just telling you a story and it doesn't beat you over the head with you, the player, are a bad person. That's true. That's true. I and think that, 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 that is comes around. I think Spec Ops does a lot worse job of that. I think Spec Ops, at least in from when I played it, made was like, no, you the player are the problem. Is is kind of the energy I got out of it. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you made a mistake. You exactly. supported this terrible thing. And it's like, no, that's not cool. That's not cool at all. Yeah. Yeah. I think that also the thing about Far Cry is like at this point, like if the game was like, hey you're kind of a bad person for killing these cultists because they were brainwashed. I'm like, bro, I don't care. Yeah, like it's no, funny. that's valid. Because mm-hmm. like, obviously in real life, I'm not going to massacre people because of their religious beliefs because that's insane, uh, but it's a video game and I have a, a bear named Cheeseburger and you're going to Yo, tell me you're going to yeah. teach me che- an ethical dude, lesson? Cheeseburger's the shit. Cheeseburger's literally so cool. And you're going to mm-hmm. tell me there's an ethical lesson to be held in the idea of like, hey, you shouldn't have made that bear attack those guys in the truck. I don't care. Dude. Oh, fuck oh, fuck yes cheese i i'd forgotten cheeseburger until this moment fucking love cheeseburger yeah. I'm not gonna lie the first two things i did in the game as soon as i got it were like i uh i saw that there was a dog on the map i went and got the dog i then i saw that there was like a boat launch right next to the dog and then i found out you could buy a plane so i bought a plane nice. and then i found out there was a bear on the map so i went and got the bear yeah no that is exactly that was, the, that the you, three actions <laughs> congratulations took. you have played the game correctly i think i don't i don't think that's even a hot take i think you can confidently say that is the correct way to play no yeah this this feels correct to me <laughs> and there was and then i and then i found the lady with the, the 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 sniper lady in the church but like um also i do want to say this isn't really like spoiler i guess at all um but at one point in time old. you were introduced to um like other religious leader using their um beliefs to um mm-hmm enact a revenge based violence which again i think is pretty based Mm -hmm. um and i think it's cool that like it doesn't just paint religion as solely bad Mm -hmm. um because like i think that's kind of a broke take honestly yeah i think it would have been the easy take and i think that's how a lot of people felt about the game without actually playing it like that's Mm -hmm. an easy like like, but how could you they're attacking christianity like no they're not they're attacking this insane man yeah exactly I feel, and, um, and that's one of those issues right where like with specifically with problems like that there's this like subset of people that are so set to make everything a problem and it's it's on both sides of the line it's not like mm-hmm. a left or right issue it's not a religious or non-religious issue there's just like for whatever reason there's people that want to make every single thing a problem 
Mm -hmm. So they'll find a problem in like this game. It's like, it's not that deep fam, but mm -hmm. you're going to find people who are like, you know, um, this game was about killing Trump supporters. And it's like, what dude, if you, if what? you are, if you, this is one of those things where if you associate your belief Cultic fanaticism with your, with your <laughs> political beliefs, maybe there's a different problem to be had there. Exactly. Maybe there's a conversation. Maybe you need to just take a second and think about why that might be. Because I, I had this conversation with my boss back at the barbershop, and he's like, oh, you know, that new Far Cry game is about killing Trump supporters. I'm like, what? no, it's not. That's It's a crazy cult in Montana that happens to be a nationalist cult. That's that's its angle, right? It's kind of like nationalist. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's, it's kind of, but it's, it's a little. Not, it. Yeah, there's definitely some nationalist notes there, but a lot mm -hmm. of it is also um, very much counter nationalist in that like, they are looking for their own form of like liberation and their own like freedom and they also think the world's ending mm -hmm. um, so like it's kind of like there's some like american fanaticism tied into there but a lot of it's just like we think it's it's just the end of the world type yeah folks. Mm -hmm. the fact that there was an american flag tipped people off in a weird way that they should not have been hit with is that yeah. basically what i'm reading into that yeah yeah i think that's fair people saw like the american flag and they're like holy shit holy, holy shit, shit. america shit. Like, well, no they actually they, you guys you guys wait it's is america the problem <laughs> if you hate america no no it's not about america in fact it is about a cult once again we're talking about a cult <laughs> <laughs> once again cannot stress this enough america not a cult this guy cult that, that's that's something uh I, i'm just gonna say the same thing i already said again so i'm not gonna say it but like i don't know i i will always and forever love people that have that happen except it's also dead infuriating and it's like really can you please just stop? Can you fucking doing not? This to yeah. me? But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, no, I agree. I want to agree. <laughs> it's very funny. It's also very sad on some level, but it's also very. Funny. Oh, yeah. No, 100 percent. Mm. Oh, I just had another sip of this coffee and I forgot how oaty the oat milk was. Oh, that's just so it's so good. Incredibly. Oat. I love oat, oat milk so much and it's so easy to make. It's obscenely easy to make. You just need a blender. Sorry, didn't want to. This guy's got a blender. No, you're fine. Didn't mean to pull away from the current no, I'm just, conversation i'm, I'm just trying to i'm trying to think that i'm trying to think about like I, I i'm honestly back to thinking about far cry because i i really did i really did like that game actually i really yeah. liked far cry 5 i just like being able to be in airplane i think that, in that the is moment, definitely an improvement over far cry 3 true it's like hey you can uh, traverse the entire game you better get that wingsuit though because these cars break down constantly if you drive them bad and you're going to drive them bad oh yeah the, the, the vehicles in far cry 5 are so durable i slammed my truck into a tree like 17 times and you didn't care every you minute loved it and i didn't care i love it thank you that meant a lot to me um yeah i just like i love flying an airplane like i just it's so fun Dude, it is very satisfying. I'm not gonna lie to you. It is. It is a good fucking time. Yeah, that was like genuinely one of like the first things I even like attempted to do. It was just like immediately like airplane time. As soon as I realized <laughs> oh, yeah. it was a possibility, it's airplane time. It's just fun. Dude, um, I agree. I'm I'm here for I it. I hope Far Cry Six maintains like the ability to traverse a map so efficiently. Although I... I do think the airplanes in Far Cry Five are a little bit like kind of overpowered. Like, I, I find that I ended up having, like, too easy of a time getting anywhere immediately in the game, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like a normal complaint for a gamer like myself. But, like, it just, it didn't, like, it felt almost like I was, I don't know. Like, I, when you I, can just start the game and run into, like, the wherever you want, because the map is completely open, it's nice, but it's also, like, a bit overwhelming. I kind of feel that though. No, I kind of, I kind of can get behind that. Like, it definitely does feel like there's almost. It is. It's almost too easy to get into places, right? Like, it's almost too easy mm -hmm. to like, just show up at any given location and be like, "Well, I have uh, murdered everyone now, well, and now I'm gonna leave." Bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I find that like I had the entire map not like scouted out, but like uh, I had been to pretty much like the dog place the bear place and the rest of the map was completely dark like even in between those two locations because i just took the hell the airplane mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and again that's not like a, an actual complaint with the game because that's on me no but it like, is, i'm not gonna blame the game weird... for putting a mechanic that i exploited yeah but it's a it's a weird feeling yeah i absolutely agree um and i am i'm excited for like far cry 6 looks pretty sick 
Dude, I love fucking what's his name? I, I can never pronounce his name properly. Fucking Far Cry. <laughs> yes, Mr. Far Cry himself. I do love uh, Mr. Yeah, Far think... Cry. The, the, oh, Blood the Dragon saying, came out in Far between as well. Here. Blood Dragon, yeah, Blood Dragon like is a the DLC shit. thing. Blood Dragon but is it's amazing. Basically like the, the, it's a separate DLC kind of deal that I like that they do. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, Far Cry 6 looks cool. Um, I just worry because it's in Cuba. I'm like, I really hope that they don't paint the military like dictatorship as the Communist Party of Cuba, who was the ones who ended the military dictatorship of Cuba. But I also don't have like much hope that they won't. Uh, yeah. Is it actually just in Cuba or is it in fake Cuba? I'm pretty sure it's in actual Cuba, which was kind of weird mm. to me because I was like, I thought they just did fake places. I, th- I also thought they did mostly fake places. Maybe it's like, maybe it's not actually in Cuba, but like the um, descriptor says in an area similar to Cuba. Maybe. Or or maybe it's just in Cuba, asterisk. And then once you get to the game, it's like not ac- asterisk, not actually Cuba. This is, yeah, kind of like how Far Cry 5 is in Montana, but it's in a fake part of Montana. And exactly. it's about a fake cult, like it's not real. Exactly. I think that that's a really, I think doing, if they went for the a, a real, like real actual Cuba, I, I would have a lot less respect for them in general like i think that's like a really bad take is to be like no this is actually you're actually in cuba this is actually what it's oh, like there. <laughs> What's it, up? Is, it is actually in cuba <laughs> yikes that's rough uh, okay that's fine i mean no wait 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 no this is okay so yara is a municipality in cuba and this is acting i think like yara is the state the Yara's Montana. Yeah, country of Cuba. Okay, I'm okay, okay with that. That's fine. I think is what I'm reading here. Sounds good to me. I'm much more. Okay yeah, I just worry that like, I don't know, because I I don't know. I mean, it's Ubisoft developed, but is it Ubisoft? Do you know that this Ubisoft is a Canadian company, or do they just have Canadian offices? They have a lot of offices all over the damn place. I'm not sure what they are yeah. originally. Um, but like, I don't know. I'm just curious as to the way it'll portray that, or like the time period it'll be setting place in. Mm-hmm. Um. Because like there's obviously the two ways it could go with like, you know, you're like a modern Cuba, like mm-hmm. going up against the ruling party, mm-hmm. or it was like the time when Cuba was literally just like, um, full of a military dictatorship and uh, slavers, and yeah, I don't know. So it's, just, but I feel like either way you're gonna rub people the wrong way. I think there's no way you can't rub people the wrong way. Absolutely, I think that there is a way that is reasons. more correct, and I know that's like a. It's not necessarily the well, most helpful thing, but I I think that there that you can do it in a way that doesn't. Yeah, I think there's definitely a, like safe routes like to take in terms of like storytelling without like making a message that is pushing some form of propaganda from some medium because obviously there's huge amounts on both sides, especially about that area. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to the way it's gonna do that, and I think if I had to guess, the best case would be what they did kind of with like Hope County, Montana, where it's like. <clears throat> the bad guy is the cult. Yeah, make it very clear. That the, and bad the bad guy, is, the guy is the bad guy is doing the bad things. That is, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think that's the I'm, best case scenario. So, like, you guys are talking about actual like the the politics of the game and yada yada yada. My biggest issue right now with the game is you if you pre order it right now, you get a special outfit for your little dog whose name is Chorizo. Um, that's oh, amazing. Fine. I love him. That's fine, but the dog is a crippled dog, so it has no back legs, and the outfit is just a different set of wheels that are, um, rebel themed. Out. What's what's wrong? Wait, with what that? do you mean rebel themed? Yeah, I don't. I think it's weird. I gotta be Wait, honest. What do you mean just, rebel themed? Um, it's whatever the local rebels on the island. Okay, I was theme. just checking to make sure that they didn't give you a Confederate flag dog wheels. Uh, no, no, that is not what happened. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's fine then. See, I like how that's the direction you were going, and I know in Dan's head, if he had gone in that direction, he would have been like, like, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, fuck I was me. thinking like, oh my god, they gave the, you can get Confederate flag dog. Mm, my dog thinks that <laughs> I've heard the South of, will rise again. I've heard of dog whistling, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I don't feel great. <laughs> But yeah, if if you if you scroll all the way down to like the bottom, you'll see the dog's outfit, and they also have a um, the Disco Loco CD launcher, which is something. I don't think I need to explain why that's not a good idea. That's just kind of weird. 
Mm -hmm. Yo, CD launcher. That reminds me. Did I ever tell you guys about my first experience with uh, Alex Jones? Uh, okay, transition. All right, no. let's go. No, I'm here for this. Let's go. Yeah, what do you guys? Okay, so my very first experience with Alex Jones was back when I worked at the Chicken Place. We would play music, right? You can, hmm. Yeah, it makes sense already. Yep. And um, in the morning, it was basically whoever was in the main area got to pick the music because they were the one next to the player. And the player was a combo radio and like and like iPod charger, you know, mm -hmm. and it had AM radio. And this one morning I walk over and I'm listening to just AM radio all morning. I tuned it out pretty heavily, but I walk over right in time to hear people talking about the new Xboxes ejecting discs too fast and killing people. And I'm just God, like, I wish that what? were me what and i'm like hey and i didn't i hadn't even heard any of the politics angle of alex jones yet i just knew that this was info wars and i'm listening to these people talk about xbox ejecting cds so hard that they kill people because the safety features were turned off by you know, probably probably the homosexuals or something like that you that's know that's incredible Dude, the I gay wish agenda that, that is killing people with an xbox 360 i'm actually really that's, upset that's, that's not how that works but I just love the idea that like Microsoft's like, hey, how should we design this disc drive? They're like, make it shoot so fast they can cut people's fucking heads off, but put a limiter on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can't can't yeah. cut, cut their heads off too quickly. Obviously, I, I just like the idea of like they're like the only disc ejectors we have are military grade, and they throw CDs at seven hundred miles an hour. We'll just write some code for it. Damn, you're you're good. All right, let's use these. Like, can you, can you imagine? But anyway, I was like, hey. We can't listen to this here because I'm already just like, this is just fear mongering. I didn't know mm -hmm. anything else about Infowars at the time, but I'm like, we can't we can't have this here. And then later I find out more about it. And I'm listening to Alex Jones just talking one day, talking about lizard people, yada, yada. And I'm like, hey, we got to turn this off. And this girl asked me why. And I'm like, this is really political. This is really so political. And we try not to talk about politics here. This has to come off. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, it was such a it was such a weird experience, though. I, I I'm not gonna it, lie. It's on my it. it's, it's on my list of like I have like a couple memories of like talk radio, like AM conservative radio personalities that don't mm -hmm. actually involve the radio personality, and it just involves the story I have been forced to associate with it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. not not to you know invoke uh rush limbaugh but i have this okay i love memory. the way you said that first of all. i also yeah i really love the way you said that i hated it but also i, I, I think really it's a three name it. type deal mm -hmm. uh yes rush limbaugh um uh, i have his i have him burned into my mind not for any of the things that he's done but because this one time way back when way back when i was i was probably like 16 and i was Sound in like an archery you? club okay. and there were a bunch of other a bunch of other kids that i knew were there and we were just, you know, vibing, having a good time, shooting arrows and such. Mm -hmm. And this kid who she had to be like 11 or 10 and her younger brother, who was like eight. Um, I don't remember why her younger brother tried to invoke the name of conservative talk radio host Rush Limbaugh, but he said it <laughs> wrong. And she's just like she corrects him. She's like, <sighs> Because whatever name he had said about it, she's like, it's Rush Limbaugh blank. It's Rush Limbaugh rolling her eyes and looking at us like, you're impressed because I know who that is. And I didn't even, I didn't know jack shit about the guy at the time. But I remembered internally rolling my eyes so hard at that really weird flex of I know who this is. And it's just like, oh, you don't know Rush Limbaugh. Who cares? <laughs> it was the most uncouth. I've never forgotten that Rush Limbaugh exists just because of that interaction. And Sufflet. anytime I hear his name, that is the first thing I think of is just someone so young who doesn't know anything about anything, just trying to impress the slightly older children with the knowledge of I know about talk radio. I don't know why. <laughs> I just like for whatever reason I think that the image of like uh the Hulk handing the guy the sandwich or like you know the image I'm talking about mm -hmm. that's like mm -hmm. hilarious to me because I just imagine like 
her being the Hulk and you being the kid hand, getting handed the sandwich, and the sandwich is just Rush Limbaugh's name. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> that's exactly what happens. Like, I don't know why that imagery is just so funny to me, but, like, literally the, that image sticks in my head constantly. I, I can't. That's so funny. Here you go. Rush Limbaugh. God, that's good. I I, right. <laughs> I think that's a super fair thing to hold on to, I'll be honest. Like I think that's that if there was one thing in your life that you should hang on to, it's that. That's I would disagree. There's a lot of things you should hold on no, to. Noah. It's just that I I would say that there's much more important things to hold on to oh, than that. More important. But that sure. one's never going to leave my mind for the rest of my life just because of uh the sheer absurdity that. of it. <laughs> God, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. There's some rush limbaugh for you. He's dead. I'm Fuck still. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm still. I'm still stuck on the. Uh, I, I'm still stuck in the way you pronounced it the first time, and that that's gonna that's gonna stick with me for a while. Oh, the fact Russian that I separated Bar. his name into two names. <laughs> <laughs> or almost like Rushlim was his first name. Because <laughs> that was a that was a mistake. Uh, oh no, that's my new. To. That's my new D and D character's name, Rushlim. Rushlim <laughs> Bob. It sounds like a spell. Well, y'all be sleeping on Rush. <laughs> oh, the world's indeed a stage, and we are merely players. Uh, you guys know Rush? No, nah, dude. I've never heard of it. Don't know what you're talking about. It's called music. Look it up. Oh, <laughs> dude, I don't wanna. Hmm. Do sounds I have to? Right. Sweat heart. This is, is this one of yeah, those things where to, I have actually. to do it? How does this work? Yeah, I, I wasn't going to tell you, but I, I it's it's mandatory. Oh, damn it. All right, well, I'll, I'll so talk you to you like later. The band rush, look though? What? And why'd you leave the podcast earlier? I had to Google music. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you guys like the band Rush, though? You guys Rush listeners? I'm personally I'm not a huge fan. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I just kind of feel like prog in general is just not my bag, you know? Yeah, I hate the Czech Republic. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare Czech you? Czech Republic joke, everybody. But yeah, I don't know. I, I prog rock just I I like simpler music. I don't like to think about my music. I just like to have it on. And there That's is why this guy likes Corey Taylor. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> you must be stopped. Um, <sighs> I don't know. I I there's a I I don't mind having it on in the background if I didn't pick it. But mm -hmm. if I'm picking my background music, Rush is never going to be on just because I want to listen to things that are simple and fun and high energy that I like. Hey, I think it's super fair. Yeah, I'm bored with that. I don't think that's fair at all. Okay, Damn. you know what? I don't either. Fair enough. Yeah. I think that's super fair. I, I don't think anything's fair. I think life's not fair, you guys, and we should just get used to it. Wow, oh, thank you. Wow. Okay, Rush Limbaugh. Oh, Real no! Over here. So, uh, you guys think... No. Sometimes. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> understandable have a nice day <laughs> go ahead and finish your question i apologize for no that's all, that's all. Okay. No, that was the question you guys think no no what do you what do you think of rush i uh, you know i like rush don't love rush but i like rush mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I... was such an aggressive agreeing on my part i i don't know where that came yeah, from yeah I... this guy's yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Hey, this guy fucking gets yeah. it hey hey he gets it. You <laughs> Me, mean, who man. doesn't like Rush. Hell yeah, you like Rush. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so I went to the dentist this week, you guys. I had a dental adventure. Okay. And yeah, that's what okay. I'm going to call it. It's Dan's Dental Adventure. Uh, so I, on what, Wednesday night, I'm up late, as I do, because I have no control over my life. And I feel something crunch in my mouth and i'm eating some i'm eating some chicken and pasta and i'm thinking wow that's weird i must have had a bone in my boneless chicken i finish up my food i take a big drink of water and suddenly shooting pain through my mouth and i'm like oh fuck what what what's what's all this then right then what's all this <gasps> oh oh well, dude, what's all this you're not supposed to hit i go i check the bathroom and where there should be nice pretty pearly white teeth there's a big black like divot in one of my teeth and I think the obvious, which is that, oh, fucking hell, one of my fillings fell out, which I okay. know is not a good thing. In fact, that's that's objectively yeah. a pretty bad thing, considering I only got a bunch of that. Like, I thought it, I, it, I only got them in, you know, last year, July, June, July, something like that. 
And uh, I, I start freaking out because I'm like, well, fuck, I can't. I'm, I'm not insured. I don't have the money for this. I don't know what we're going to do. Yada, yada. Mm -mm. Uh, so, you know, many freakouts later. Next, we call up my who I went to last year. And I'm like, listen, it's an emergency. Can I get in? Like, get me in as quick as you can. This is because it, it is. It's, it's like I can't really eat anything because there's a big old hole in my tooth. Third zeros around. I get a call back and they're like, hey. We're going to get you in today or no. This was, said, hey. this was this was Tuesday. Sorry, this was Tuesday into. It was Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We I got the call back and they're like, hey, we'll get you in tomorrow. I'm like, and she's like, in the meantime, go to CVS, put that temporary filling in your teeth. And I'm like, I hate that, but all right, let's do it. I go, I get the temporary filling. I stick it in. It's, it's an unpleasant experience, whatever. Thursday rolls around and there is such a massive snowstorm in the Northeast that <laughs> they just don't even go into the office. Like they just straight up don't make it to the office that day. And so I, I'm calling, I'm calling, trying to get a call back. I finally get a call back the next morning, Friday morning. Uh, and they're like, hey. Yeah, sorry about that. We literally weren't able to get into the building because it was it was snowed in. Uh, we can get you in tomorrow. I'm like, well, you told me that before, but all right, let's do it again. At this point, I have I have now got I just I I'm still in the I'm basically down to applesauce and whatever else little things I can eat because the temporary filling while it helps is more for like, hey, trying to keep it protected. It's not actually like usable, right? I <laughs> I roll up. And that morning, it was uh, it was actually yesterday. Uh, yeah, Saturday morning. Well, Saturday morning, I go in. Turns out, uh, so so I'm, I'm uh, this whole time I'm hyping myself up, right? I'm I'm thinking, well, I know I've had cavities in that area. Maybe the cavity grew underneath the filling and like destabilized it, made it you know made it so it wasn't held in there anymore. I'm thinking, well, last time I was there, I know there was a tooth that I was told I had to keep an eye out for because there might be a we might have to do a root canal on it eventually. And I'm thinking, well. I'm fucked financially. I'm never going to financially recover from this. Go in. Fucking credit words do. She got I I know I like interrupt. I like shifted her entire day backwards half an hour because I just like she just got me in it literally the second they opened. And fucking turns out it was not. Uh, so I thought I had thought that I had had entirely resin fillings at this point. It was not mm -hmm. a resin filling. It was a old metal filling from when I was like in my early teens. Oh, my gosh. Which is actually that's actually a good thing because it means that it wasn't a resin. Like those are those aren't supposed to last. They don't last that that long. They they last a while, but they they are known to crack and, and break over time. So it had it, it, it is an old metal filling. It had cracked. Drills right. it out, replaces the new one in and out. Literally took me less than an hour in the dentist. Top to bottom. I guys, I can't tell you the amount of relief I have knowing that it wasn't like because that was actually such a best case scenario that I had not considered it like to the point where like I was trying to figure out, OK, well, I can't pay rent this month, but if I push off rent for a month, maybe I can get the first payment out for this and then we'll figure out where to go from there. Like I, I was convinced that like I was just fucked. But no, absolute best case scenario, fucking just a just a normal old metal filling that that fell apart and. uh then I had to fix it. R really not not too bad. Just a nightmare of a of a weekend of, of a week leading up to it because just stress and financial and uh, not knowing what the hell was going on with my face. Mm -hmm. And that that was my that was my dental adventure. There was I mean, there was one thing that I'm not going to talk about because I don't want to. Uh, I'll tell you afterwards, but I know a lot of people have like weird things about like specifically teeth and like mouth stuff. So I'm not going to not going to talk about it on the air, but. No, oh, overall, that. went really, went really, really well. Best case scenario. I just wanted to, uh, so, I wanted to, wanted to tell my little story. Question on that front: Do either of you have like an inherent problem with the dentist? No, I haven't been to the dentist in a long, long time. I, I actually have never had a terrible dental experience. I've had my wisdom teeth removed. I've had maybe half a dozen fillings now. Now, probably closer to. It. Eight or ten, eight or ten fillings now because I have terrible dental hygiene for a lot of reasons that I'm not getting into on the air. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I have no problem with the dentist. I dentists are actually really cool. I I think that they what they do is kind of insane because I know for a fact that I couldn't handle being inside someone's mouth that much because people are fucking gross. Yeah, I don't I don't like I don't like other people's mouths. It's kind of nasty. Yeah, people are people are fucking. I nasty. love other people's mouths. That mm. bad take. Kinky. Wrong. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've I've just wondered because I've never had a huge issue with uh with dentists um either. 
but I know it's like it's a very, very common like phobia, I guess. Well, I mean, understandably, right? Like they are either they kind of can't really tell you what's going on, right? They they because they're usually like so close to you that even just talking is going to get like spittle everywhere. They're wearing their mask, but you get the idea. I most in my experience, most of my dentists have always been like relatively quiet while they're working. They don't really tell you what what the hell's going on. They just go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, they actively drew like unlike something where if I go to the doctor and I think that I've sprained my arm, right? I can pretty easily see what they're doing and know what they're working with. It sounds like you kind of just have to lay back and trust them to do their job perfectly, which I can absolutely be like like that. That's. I don't love that. I don't love that experience for me. Um, no, I absolutely understand the, the the dentist phobia. I just I've never had it. I've I've always been like that. Nah, dentists or do dentists or just out here vibing. Hmm. Um, fair enough, fair enough. Also the drill. I mean, nobody likes the drill, right? I, I, I assume we've all had. I mean, it, I guess it's a bad assumption. Have we all, do, do do all three of us have fillings? Jackson, do you have fillings? Um, yeah. Well, um, I, yeah, I do not have filling. Well, I mean, I have a filling. But it's because I bashed my face into a gym wall when I was a kid, so technically I uh, have a filling in my front tooth because I chipped the shit out of it. Okay, but not uh, an fun actual, fact about my old dentist, thing. by the way, I I had a chip in my tooth for three years, and this man's like, no, nah, he doesn't need it filled. He can just live like that. And then Wait, as soon you? as I is moved to a new fine? dentist, the guy was just like, we need to. How long has that been a thing? No, we need to fill that now. That's actually really bad for his teeth. Uh, mm -hmm. so thanks, Bob. Honestly? He's retired now, so I can say his we name, but that man was a mess. The number of times Which... that my dad had to get his fillings redone from Dr. Bob, because that man yeah. didn't know he was using him like a bank and doing bad fillings on purpose to get his like insurance to keep paying for more oh shitty God. dentist, shitty dentist. That's just illegal. That's not even like a bad dentist. That's just, that's just like a criminal. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'll agree with that. I I think my 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 dentist growing up was all kind of shitty, if I'm being honest. You also have Doctor Bob. I actually <laughs> don't remember his first name. If you had his last name, I would I would recognize it, but I don't. I don't oh, I have no I idea. Like he went by Doctor Bob. I had a dentist as a kid that was really cool, and then one day he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna go uh, work at the university," and then he was like, "I'm not being a like a private dentist anymore." And then That's I a, didn't have that dentist anymore. Good for good him. Good for him, though. Like, it was good for him, yeah, but it was also kind of like, oh. I, um, actually, Jackson, you, you grew up in roughly the same area. You went to the same high school I would have gone to. I know Sam went to the same dentist I did, and he was no good for her either. Um, the one in Albion, it, the one like right up, I, by, it, it was like right by the high, or not Albion, I'm sorry, the one in, yeah, Paris, I didn't go to the one right by the, the, the high school. I went to one in uh, Gerard, so okay. just a pretty nice guy. Yeah, dude, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's it. Maybe everyone just has bad dental experience. I don't have any bad dental experiences. Right? But you also don't don't have a fear of dentists, so I'm saying. That's true, and now my dentist doesn't even have a private practice anymore. He works at a university. So. That's true. Which, you As know, again, good for him, but good also, him. like, that kind of sucked. <laughs> yeah, that kind of yeah, sucked. Yeah, it kind of sucked, yeah, yeah. though, because I was like, well, there goes my dentist. Yeah, what are you going to do without a dentist now? A little different one, I guess. No, uh, I think the, the obvious answer is just don't, don't get your dental work done ever again. That's how it works, right? You like that. <laughs> You just just don't go to see a dentist anymore. The slightest. Uh, yeah, it's not at all anything I've done. What'd you say? Sorry. Nothing. Just being sassy. So we should actually um, get probably out wrap of here. it up pretty soon. Yeah, we've been, been going talking a for a while. Than, than typical. Yeah, no, no, yeah this, is, this is a good time no, for us to no, wrap up. No, pump the brakes on this. All the far cries. No more crying. No more dentists. This is the end of the podcast. Damn it! Yeah. We're going to talk about end of the podcast things. Yeah, we hate dentists now. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. We at off the air stand against <laughs> bad dentists. I guess we we can keep. Okay. Good yeah. No, dentists. we can. No, I we hate can the good ones too. No, that one's that one works. All bad dentists. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. If you're yeah, a bad dentist, too, for we don't matter. stand you. We really got some hot takes here. In fact, damn, I don't like medical malpractice. I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> damn. Damn. Whoa, Jackson. Very brave. Very I think brave. it's fairly unethical and not very polite. Wow. <laughs> That's it. I'm saying it, you know. <laughs> Them rude ass medical malpractices. You know how yeah. they be. I'm sick of it. Anyway, um, if you too hate medical malpractice, let us know at Twitter at the off the air. 
or at Patreon at Off the Air, you know, wh- so, whichever one you want. Or if you really want to let us know, you go to Apple Podcasts and you leave us a five star review saying, hey, I hate medical malpractice. Why is no one so angry about this? You, you were also angry about this. I am? We're all, really? all together. We are oh. angry about this. Oh, hot damn. We got, we got a new review. Oh, <gasps> oh shoot. We got a new review. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Remember last week when I'm like, oh, we got 14 reviews, but there's no one written? Well, as it turns mm-hmm. out, it just didn't process yet because here it is. Yo, let's go. New reviews. All right. Uh, this five-star review, highly entertaining. With having more free time on my hands lately, I've been able to catch up. You guys have great dynamics. Keep it fun and engaging. It really just feels like I'm sitting around with friends and having a conversation. Good job, guys. And that's from A Good 92 Shout out to you. I know who you are. You, you guys probably don't, but that's okay. Thank you very much for that review. Greatly appreciate I like, good I, I know you've kept on the accent for some reason on this. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I don't really I, know. It's it's just it's it's, it's just it's, here. It's sticking around. We can't get rid of it. We asked it to leave politely, and now it's stuck here. It's one of those things where every now and then you slip into a you slip into a thing, and then you're just kind of stuck with it. And I've had a lot more caffeine today than I've had for the last like five okay. weeks. So yeah, like he's going, he's going. I'm I'm just kind of here right now, and I don't think I can. I I'm actually trying to drop it, and I don't think I can. So like we're just gonna so here we are. This. We're stuck with it. We're living. We're vibing. It's all We're happening vibing so here with, fast. with this shitty, shitty accent. Uh, anyway, it's all happening so fast. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It was a good time. Listen to uh, listen to the podcast. That's about all I got. Anything from you guys? No. No. Hell yeah. <laughs>